guys doing? It's like 400 degrees out here. And not in here, it's not. <laughs> it, it is now that we got the doors well, open. Yeah. It's starting thanks, to Dave. warm up, you know. But uh, <laughs> hey, that thing works pretty good, Scott. Oh, thanks. You know, what I'm amazed about is I know you brought a contraption with you here. And I thought it was going to be sitting alongside the CT. And we'd look at that. And we'd look at the airplane. But it's in here. How'd you manage this? Well, you know, we've developed the installation for the CT, the air conditioning system, and you get pretty familiar with it as you design it and install it into the into the aircraft. So I thought, well, it would be neat if we could, you know, bring one out because it's pretty modular and hook it up, and charge it, and actually make it run in the airplane. Now you did this here, though. I mean, you didn't bring this airplane to the show oh, with no. this in it. Right. No, you the did plane this was right here. here and now. Right. In fact, the fellow who has this plane. Um, called me up and says, um, hey, uh, Scott, this morning I came to my airplane and there was an air conditioner in it. He said, I assumed you guys must have had something to do with it. <laughs> there may have been some communication flaws before we put the air conditioning in, but he was pleased, I'll tell you. <laughs> so we're speaking with Scott Severin, a guru of U.S. aviation. They do a lot of cool things, and we'll let you touch briefly on the other things that you do, but in the light sports space, uh, you've become kind of a, an important figure in the South Central U.S., and now evidently bigger than that with this idea here. I I'm still kind of amazed that you're able to sandwich all this in. I see you use the luggage compartment for most right. of the hardware, right. but there's a unit here uh, that the camera saw earlier. Uh, which is uh, blowing out the cool air, and and do you have the return? Is that behind the seat it's that you're in? Just behind the seat, right here. And uh -huh. that's an ad. It's not being blocked too much for the airflow to get in there. I mean, clearly it works. So yeah, no, it was designed in um, into the. We have correct volumes going through the return, and designed in because of the design of the CT and some cleverness in the installation we designed. Um, the volumes are, as you notice, there. Uh, we move a lot of air in the. Yeah, it's here. like windy in here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, really nice. Now there's, so our dear friends up in Minnesota who are experiencing snow while we sit here in the sunshine and warmth. Uh, this air conditioner may not seem too valuable, although it gets hot there in the mm -hmm. summer too. But man, for all the southern climate where a lot of aviation occurs, uh, this uh, fly cool system from AMT is. That's kind of remarkable. People went autopilots in, air, in light sport aircraft. Ooh, we didn't expect that, but we certainly didn't expect air conditioning in LSA. You know, we're thrilled and with the response here. People have been um, shocked that there's air conditioning available for light sport, and certainly it, you know, it fits for the air conditioning to be in the leading light sport um, aircraft. So, so this is this is retrofitable to all of the CTs <clears throat> that are currently out there then? It's for the CTLS, specifically designed for the CTLS, and we'll look at the CTLSI uh, next. Uh, so it's a retrofit, we put them in, we install them in Dallas, um, and uh, we'll be the, the national installation center uh, for the... Let us have your airplane for about a week and you'll pick a, a real cool plane. If it wasn't cool before you brought it to us, it'll be real cool when you when it leaves. It's a matter, it doesn't matter of scheduling and some other things, I assume. Sure. But, but obviously sure. you did bring the hardware to a show to an airplane you had not seen before. That's true. Is that correct? Yeah. And still, man, and it looks like it's... It looks, I mean, it looks done to me. I thought it would be, I don't know, clutched together or something just to demonstrate. But right. in fact, he, he could go home with it. Well, Scott, in an automobile, the addition of an air conditioner, especially, let's say, to an air, a car with a smaller engine and so forth, that really taxes the engine quite a bit. I, I don't see how that works in this airplane here. Does it draw a lot of power off the engine? In which case, does that affect the performance? Um, it's an electric air conditioner, and so it uses its own alternator, um, so it doesn't tax the existing um, uh, alternator or engine system. Uh, it uses a 75-amp alternator, now that sounds like a lot, but we we put in that high amperage because, look, when you usually want the air conditioner is taxing, right? Uh, but we know with these engines, and the engines the running of, lower RPM. Yeah, the amount of power you have is dependent on RPM. So we want a good, strong air conditioning when you're taxing at low RPM. Right. So to get the amount of amperage we need, which is about 30 amps, um, we needed a larger alternator so that at low RPMs we'd have enough to uh, supply the aircraft. Okay. <clears throat> so what can the, uh, how does the unit perform when it's in here? I don't mean relative to the engine part that we just talked about now, but how much temperature does it lower or, or oh. give us some parameter like that? Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, we're pretty cool right now, but if we were just coming up to the plane, for example, on a, a hundred, degree, hundred degree day, for example, um, we'll get a 20 degree drop in 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty quick. And that's quite a bit. Uh, that's comforting onto this system is a pre-cooling. 
So how's that work? Well, so you come out to the airport. The first thing you do is you plug an inverter into your air conditioner into an auxiliary power receptacle, so that uh, the air conditioner runs plugged into your hangar. Then you go and do your pre-flight. Now, yeah. when you're ready to fly, the airplane is pre-cooled. Um, and now it's a much more pleasant. And you haven't experience. done anything to the aircraft battery or anything you else. You haven't taxed any systems whatsoever. Very clever. Very so clever. that way the air conditioner works less when you go out into the heat, and it's a much more pleasant experience. Just up here, what do we got sure. to operate the system? Right over here, you see we've got a fan on or off. If you don't want to use the air conditioner, you can use just the fan. And then for the air conditioning, there's a low, medium, and a high. So there's a, um, a selection of different, and you know, the works very well at medium. When you're on the ground, a high is nice, but medium, you get a, a nice cold air, not so much volume, but a cold air that comes in. And in fact, in flight, medium and lower your best uh, places to use. These are fully articulating um, uh, oh, bins, yeah, though, so you can point them up, down, to the well, left, to the um, right. Get more information. Somebody sees the video and says, "Hey, you know, I've got a CTLS or another airplane." You guys work at uh, lots of airplanes there at US sure. Aviation, and you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area. You bet at Denton Enterprise Airport, just north of Dallas Fort Worth. So central to a lot of the country and down in the Sun Belt, clearly. Uh, where do we go to get some more information sure. about uh, this product and other things that U.S. Aviation does? For uh, email would be info at usaviation.aero. Uh, that's the simplest address. Or you can go to uh, usaviation.aero or ussportplanes.com. Okay, so that gives us a number of places to go. I've got coverage on the Fly Cool system from ANT. Uh, some other videos we've also got and other airplane installations. You can find that at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here in sunny Florida where it's nice and warm, except not in here. <laughs>